All right, time to check in with some uh, former athletes at uh, Utah State. It's always fun to catch up with some of these guys that are uh, that have left Utah State and have uh, still playing or keeping uh, keeping the dream alive. And a guy who just recently announced that that his professional career is done. Ty Wesley, kind enough to join us, and one of the all-time great Aggies. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Is it? It doesn't. You know, frankly, I'm not gonna lie. You know, as a fan, it feels weird seeing that you're done playing basketball because it just felt like the other day you were done at Utah State. I mean, how quickly have these years gone by for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been nine years since I, uh, since I played at Utah State, wow. and it, it, it seems like it was just yesterday. Uh, you know, I remember those, all the feelings that I had, especially watching, you know, as I watched the Mount West Conference Tournament this year, it was all the feels were back. So let's go back a little bit to your uh, – your time at Utah State and what was it that led you to signing with Utah State and uh and coming to Logan to play basketball yeah so it actually the biggest factor was BYU uh hosing me on a scholarship that was <laughs> that was probably the biggest thing because I actually verbally committed to BYU um and was planning on going there and then they came back after recruiting me and, and they, they said they didn't have a scholarship for me after they told me they did so I was pretty frustrated with them I uncommitted to them and, and shopped around. And what drew me to Utah State was, was Coach Morrill, his honesty after being, you know, kind of handled very poorly with BYU. His honesty and him being up front with me was, the, was a breath of fresh air, and, and it really drew me to him and to Utah State. You know, you've got a big personality. Stu has a big personality. What was it like playing for a coach like that? Because I'm sure you guys clashed every now and then. You know what? It was awesome. I have a big personality, but uh, but he, it, it never was around Coach Morrill. I, yeah. I, I, he kept me in check very, very well. You know, I, I got in trouble once or twice um, just doing dumb stuff. And my biggest thing was, oh, please don't tell Coach Morrill. You know, it was almost like, like a dad. Like, oh, don't, don't tell, tell dad. dad. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I feared that man. And he uh, – he kept me in check, which was which was probably a really good thing for my career. So uh, this is a uh, this will show you how old I am. I actually called the state championship game that you played against Tyler Newbold, and uh, and, and I know that 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 has a probably you reminded him of that game every now and then. But oh yeah, you uh you, that, those there was so much talent on those teams. You and Tyler and Jared Quell and and so many guys. I mean. Who's some of the, the favorites? And I, you don't have to, I mean, you want to be careful. You don't want to tick anybody off. But, I mean, what was it like playing with some of, the, some of these greats that ever played at Utah State? Yeah, I, I just feel so fortunate. You know, like I look back and, I, and because I was there for so long, I mean, I yeah. had a one redshirt year, then I did two years on my mission, then I did four years playing. So I, really I was there for the span of seven years. I shared a room with Spencer Nelson on the road. Wow. I got Nate Harris. I got J.C. Carroll was my roommate, pretty much. And then I had Gary, Jared, Tyler, you know, Pooh, Matt, Brady Jardine. And then guys after me, I had Preston Medlin. And I have a relationship with Spencer Butterfield. And, and I'm really close to Sam Merrill. And so it's like, it's, 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 a, it's as if I never left and I've been gone for nine years. You know, and that's one thing I love about Utah State is we were not as I guess we're not as big or I don't know, but we just, we really have a tight knit community and we really take care of each other off the court. You know, Gary Wilkinson's looked out with out for me, not just in my professional career, but now off now that I'm done playing ball, he's, he's still looking out for me. I didn't know you overlapped with Spencer Nelson. That might be the, the coolest guy and the nicest guy on the planet. Like there's not yeah. a bone in his body. Talk about a big personality. That guy yeah. can fill yeah. up the room, you know? But, yeah, I, I got everybody. Favorite moments? Any game or two that jump out at you as some of your favorites? Yeah, beating Nevada on Nevada's home court in the WAC championship for Gary's senior year, that was pretty special. Um, and then, obviously, winning the WAC tournament my, my senior year. Um, you know, in, that was in Vegas. That was really cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many. We, we, it was a, just – normal to cut down nets every year and, yeah. and hoist a trophy. So it was pretty awesome. I don't want to bring up any bad memories, but I asked Stu once uh, he came on the podcast and I asked him, what's the most painful loss? And he went right to Marquette. Is that the same with you? 
has to be Marquette. We lost by one point, um, you know, and it was just – we we had such a good team. You know, yeah. we, we lost J.C. Carroll, and, th- and people thought we were going to be done. And we had such a balanced team. Uh, so that one hurt. And then my senior year, we lost by five to Kansas State. You know, we kind of – we felt like we got we got done dirty by the committee and in, in giving us a 12 seed when we were 30 and three. But – and I think we, we never really got over that. I remember that post-game press conference. You uh, you made a reference about wearing your home whites in the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's, yeah. how, that's how poorly seated that team was. I mean, you guys had no business being a 12 seed. Yeah, and that, that's what we thought. We had we had three losses in 33 games. Yeah. Uh, and we, we'd been to the tournament three, you know, two previous times. You know, we had that experience. It was just uh, just a bad deal, I guess, looking back. When you uh, when you look at the last couple of years, you mentioned you, you've gotten to know Sam pretty well. How much pride does it bring seeing that this program coming back and and uh, and being at a high level and you know back to back trips to the NCAA tournament? Although COVID you know knocked out this last year, but two conference tournament championships in the Mountain West Conference. It, it is they have achieved so much. You know to be in that's a step up from what we did. You know right because they're in the Mountain West. They're they're playing at a higher caliber of uh, of competition and yeah i just love it because sam merrill's a utah boy and yeah. you know that's that's really what the utah state program had been built on was was these utah kids or these kids in the valley or close you know around and and so it, it was awesome to see that and and when i go overseas i people say hey where'd you go to college you know i'm proud to say utah state you know i've been gone for nine years and Seven of those years were kind of rough saying, oh, I'm from Utah State, you know, because our, our, our program hadn't done very well since I'd left. But now it's like, yeah, you know, people know who we are. So do you ever uh, take credit for the legend that is Wild Bill? Because from what I hear, you should. I take full credit for Wild Bill. <laughs> Everything positive that he's ever done, I take credit for. Everything negative, that's not on me. Him. Yeah, that's on him. No, so, yeah, funny. You know, I, I don't know if you know how it started, but he, he, he hates basketball. I said, come to a game and you'll change your mind. And uh, I came to a game. They made him stand up and take his shirt off, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, he told that story to me uh, last summer, and I had no idea that, 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 that he didn't like basketball and that it was you that said, hey, just come to a game. You're going to have a good time. And he, he had a good time. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, man. He's – you know, it's funny because I, I used to have to talk him into having fun all the time. It was weird. <laughs> Hey, so talk about uh, New Zealand. What was that like? Man, that country is unreal. You know, it's such a beautiful place. You know, on a, definitely a bucket list place I wanted to go and to have that opportunity. You know, and I followed Gary out there. Gary went out there first and said, hey, you'd love this out here. You need to try to get here. And so it came, you know, highly recommended from Gary. And that, I mean, I was able to win a championship there and really get my foot in the door of the Australian Basketball League, which helped me. And obviously, I finished my career there. So, yeah, very instrumental in my career. I mean, you, you hear New Zealand, and you don't necessarily go to basketball, but for heard it's, it's alive and well, and they, they really eat it up down there. Oh, yeah. There's very good high-level basketball, high-level basketball players. You know, their best player right now is Steven Adams, who's – yeah top five center in the league, you know, so yeah, they're, they're, they're doing well for themselves, especially for how small they are. What was it? Uh, so what was the decision like to, to finally hang it up? How hard of a decision was that for you? Yeah, it was extremely hard. Um, you know, it's just all I've known uh, and all I, I'm just, a, I'm just still like a, I'm not ready to join the real world, I guess. I'm just kind of a goofball still. So it's so hard to say, Oh, I don't play basketball for a living and I can just go and, you know, shoot the ball, put the ball in the hole is what I have to do. And then, you know, it's such a fun job and so easy, really. I get, you know, I train for four hours a day and then I'm home with my kids for at noon. So it's hard. It was a hard decision, but you know, it's one that, that I think, I think we made the right decision, especially looking with what's going on in the world. Yeah. Did that have anything to do with your decision? That had everything to do with my decision. Oh, okay. Yeah. The COVID thing is just, it was too much to overcome. My wife's been telling me to hang it up for years, but COVID kind of won the battle for her. Um, so what now? I remember, you know, you talk about Spencer Nelson. I've known Spencer for a long time and 
he and I are, are somewhat close and I know that it wasn't easy for him hanging it up and, you know, working a nine to five at a, at a desk and, and, and it's not an easy thing to do for a high level athlete. What, what are your plans and, and what do you expect to do? So I have been uh, offered a job to work as a mortgage loan officer. And right now I'm just, I am working on getting licensed to do that. Uh, it's definitely going to be a transition, but uh, you know, I, I have this newfound energy and excitement for this new thing that I, I want to learn and learn everything about it. And so that's where my focus is right now. I have to pass this test that I failed the first time. So it's been a, it's been hard, you know, being removed from school for so long, it's been a struggle and trying to balance, keep my kids alive and, and, uh, and studying has been tough, but yeah, you know, I look to, to do mortgages and, and provide for my family that way. Hopefully one day move back to Logan if I can convince my wife. Yep. That, so where are you at now? Salt Lake or? So we're in Pocatello right now. Oh, okay. um, yeah, but my plans are, are hopefully work in Logan for two days a week and then be home in Pocatello for three. And then if everything goes to plan, maybe like in a year, move down to Logan. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, hey, I'm sure whatever you do, you're, you're going to end up being great at it because that's, that's just kind of what we've come to expect from you throughout the years. We appreciate you doing this, man, and taking us down uh, memory lane a little bit. And uh, let's do it again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys.